What is up, alien army? I am Oculus, the alien next door, purveyor of esoteric lore. And today our esoteric topic is going to be a straight and pure channeled session. It's just um, what I channeled, me reading it aloud podcast style. So uh, there's nothing that you're really going to miss visually in this um, video. You can just uh, slap on some earbuds, headphones, whatever it is, clean the house, do what you got to do, and uh, go ahead and listen. You're not going to miss anything on the screen. So today's topic, we are going to be talking about the quote-unquote malefic planets, astrologically speaking, and um, the malefic planets that we are going to be covering today are Mars, Saturn, and Pluto, okay? So depending on who you ask, uh, you know, Mars and Saturn are typically always considered malefic, Pluto sometimes, and, uh, you know, we're going to get into these things, okay? So uh, now I'm just going to get straight into the channel, so if the wording uh, sounds a little not like me, you know that this is a channel text, so, um, you know, take it as you will, all right? So let's get started. Today, we are going to be discussing what we consider to be malefic planets in astrology. The word malefic, stemming from Latin origin, male, meaning ill, ficus, meaning doing. The technical definition of malefic is causing or capable of causing harm or destruction, especially by supernatural means. Astrologically speaking, the two malefic planets are considered to be Mars, the lesser malefic, and Saturn, the greater malefic. Here is where we will add Pluto, as our summarization of Plutonian energy would be best described by the former definition of the word. If you are familiar with our channel, you will most likely notice how much we enjoy defending the often ill-thought-of esoteric and occult content. This is why we bring to you the true meaning of the malefic planets, astrologically speaking. Our summarization of the planets is as follows. Mars, masculine exerted. Saturn, masculine neutral. Pluto, masculine unsettled. This describes strictly the most adequate way in which we may convey the planetary energies of these planets and does not have to do with the physical gender of any kind. When we say masculine energy, we refer to the divine masculine energetic structure of the planet. The above mentioned planets are masculine dominant, energetically speaking. That clarification is needed to be known in order for us to explain further our definitions of the planets. The energy of Mars is masculine exerted, igniting, pushing forward, and masquerading as itself at all times. It is constantly pushing forward, aiming higher, and running stronger. Its energy is supercharged and always on the move. The energy of Saturn is masculine neutral. Masculine energy is present, yet does not push forward at all costs like Mars energy. Saturn's energy is unyielding, unflinching, and a powerhouse of solidity. Its energy is not erratic or chaotic as Mars can sometimes be viewed as. Saturn showcases his dominance by remaining firm without taking any action at all. Because of this, we refer to him as neutral, not pushing forward and not retreating either. The energy of Pluto is masculine unsettled. We are aware that this may be an unorthodox description of Plutonian energy, however we will explain our thesis in a short while. Masculine unsettled denotes the destructive power of Pluto. 
Destruction is typically considered what you would call negative in nature. However, if a structure is decaying, outdated, and in severe distress, the destruction of that thing would be the very energy it requires as not to be a danger to itself. Do you see the distinction? So when we refer to Pluto as masculine unsettled, we are saying that he is destructive in nature. But destruction of the old can be a godsend to one who is attempting to build anew. Unsettled, as we describe it here, is energy that is at eternal unrest, continually, continually seeking out things which no longer serve in order to dismantle and destroy them. Sometimes Pluto stands still and simply controls the demolition, and sometimes he is the dynamite itself. He, unlike Mars and Saturn, can shapeshift to benefit his means. If he is required in the moment to take the form of a disaster, he will do so. If he is required to appear as an angel, he will do so as well. So with this quality, he appears as unsettled as his true form is never really shown to the casual observer. Now, as we have introduced our knowledge of the planets, Mars, Saturn, and Pluto, we will tell you what they mean astrologically, why they are traditionally considered malefic, and the truth as to why they are not. Malefic in astrology simply means to the casual observer that the said planet brings about an ill misalignment of energy. It is mostly stated that malefic planets carry a connotation of detrimental nature. Occasionally, Neptune and Uranus are considered to be malefic as well, and there is a video on this channel which goes more into detail about these two planets if you feel that is calling to you. We will tell you this, no planet or celestial body is detrimental. They each have positive and negative aspects to them, and our mission is to help align the seekers with the higher octave of each planet in order to bring out their most positive and delicious attributes. So let us begin. Mars in astrological terms is the planet of war, conflict, and aggression. It is how thoughts and emotions coagulate together and are expelled from the body through dynamic action. Mars is a personal planet and holds dominion over how the physical body receives, regulates, and releases tension. Mars is arbitrary in its action over how the body expresses itself viscerally on the material plane. The sign and house that Mars is in shall indicate in further detail how one handles confrontation, how one initiates physical action, and how one unwinds from their taking of physical action. It is beneficial for the seeker to study the sign and house placement which Mars falls in the natal chart, as well as major aspects to it. These placements will show how the action of Mars is directed and displayed. It is important to remember that Mars energy is always strong and forward moving. He prefers action in his affairs. This may be why he is commonly viewed as being malefic. However, we say, if one does not release energetic expression at all, it is always detrimental to the individual. So, Mars then becomes an asset, a solid ally, once his abilities are recognized and rewarded. If one stifles the emotion or energetic expression of the physical self, and there is no outlet, they will begin to absorb these stagnant energies within their body. This is the prime creator of disease. When organic energetic motion is not constantly being flushed out. The benefit of Mars is to figure out how one gets angry, aroused, or physically stimulated. When knowledge of one's individual Mars energy is possessed, 
he is then able to communicate to the seeker how the best way for him to be displayed shall be granted. In example, a seeker with a water Mars will express energy much differently from one which has a fire Mars and so on and so forth. Mars energy only becomes a hindrance when stifled or suppressed. This is because of his powerful, masculine, assertive nature. At his core, he desires and demands to be seen, but you must understand his role in your experience in order to co-create productive energetic expression with him. Else, he shall run rampant and dominate over one's experience, which is likened to the phrase, control your temper. Temper here, meaning temperament, and Mars is temperamental in design. This is his strongest feature. He does not allow an other to disrespect him without a consequential action back. Imagine if everyone always turned the other cheek. There would be no respect for one's personal boundaries and chaos would surely ensue. This is why we speak highly of Mars. His placement in the natal chart explains exactly how he maintains his position as your strongest ally. His energy stands up for the well-being of the physical body and its boundaries. To understand the Mars placement is to exert self-expression and dynamic willpower healthfully and proactively and always ethic ethically. One must understand what drives their Mars sign and only then will one be able to hold the reins of this placement. Saturn, as we convey, is considered masculine neutral. His nature, as aforementioned, is stable and unyielding to current circumstances, though it may be whirling about in a melange of disarray. Saturn shows in the natal chart where one has chosen prior to entry on the physical plane what area of his experience he wishes to accumulate more knowledge in and explore. This is why Saturn is commonly referred to as the karmic planet and father time and also why he is considered malefic and oppressive. The message of Saturn is as follows. Prior to one's entry in the physical realm, one's soul chose a general path in which he desired to follow during his experience. The soul then called upon Saturn, the governor of teachers, lessons, and the like, to be his guide. The beacon of light, so to speak. As the soul enters the physical domain, he knowingly chooses to forget his self from previous lifetimes as well as his contract with Saturn. The Saturn contract, as we like to call it, what one commonly refers to as karma, is the agreement that the soul made with Saturn, binding them together until the contract is fulfilled and carried out. Saturn is the Lord of Time, astrologically speaking, and he remains standing still, steadfast in his promise to fulfill his end of the agreement, which the soul and he agreed upon. So Saturn's sign and house placement is, in very generalized terms, the main area of life purpose that one's soul chose to focus on. Viewing it from this angle, the individual may find many truths in their experience thus so far hidden here, for Saturn's lessons are rarely learnt right away, and much data has been accrued here for the soul to analyze. The house and spiral, the house and sign of Saturn, as well as aspects, will indicate typically a spiral of some sort. There is movement here sometimes upward spiral spiraling sometimes downward but it is typically very easy to spot to the awakened eye 
This is an area where patterns, programs, and paradigms exist and linger until they are gazed upon. Not with the two eyes, but with the new eye, which is born out of perceptive awareness. This is where the misconstruction of astrological Saturn takes hold. They claim he restricts and binds and delays, and to the untrained eyes, it may seem so. However, he is neutral in his gravity and asserts his masculine nature by refusing to buckle under the pressure stemming from the ego to order a change there. Saturn does not play well with the ego. He views the ego as a frivolous thing, a fly to be swatted away by the authoritative hand. He maintains and upholds his end of the agreement by refusing to hand over the key to awareness to an ego seeker. Saturn only deals with the higher self and patterns seen in the house and sign he governs will not be recognized until the seeker has unlearned everything he thought he knew in that area. This area may seem stagnant month after month, year after year, until the individual is finally jolted awake from his slumber. He finally realizes, with his eye the path he chose in this lifetime and is appreciative for the lessons he learned here and the information he gathered from his experience. Now he is set free from his karma, if you wish to call it that. He has acquired knowledge in this realm enough to last infinite lifetimes as true knowledge is never lost, only hidden for a while. This is the moment of enlightenment or awakening to the soul's true purpose in this lifetime. We will say this, some individuals take many lifetimes to learn one lesson. They may fail time and again and so Saturn carries out his end of the agreement with the soul for eons of lifetimes. He does not hand the key over to the ego. So know that if one has passed the test of Saturn, so to speak, that they are an awakened one. We will conclude by saying that each individual soul's purpose has a different undertone, even if Saturn's sign and houses are the same, there may be similarities, but each is on his own unique journey. It is important to advise others of Saturn's role in their experience only if they seek your counsel. One must never attempt to inflict an other with their remedies unless directly requested to do so. This violates the terms of the Saturn contract theirs and one's own, as unsolicited advice only arrives from the space of the ego and never of the soul's accord. We thank you for your understanding. Pluto is where we share the meaning of masculine unsettled. Pluto is masculine in nature and as we stated can be a shapeshifter. He is metamorphosis. He cannot stand stagnation or standing still like Saturn. He does not revolutionize or stand up for himself viscerally like Mars. He sniffs out falsities and travesties and blasphemies, and he entices them into self-destruction. This may be why he is considered malefic in some terms but we assure you he is not. Pluto is the transformer. He riles up the nonsense, scatters it around, and laughs as it blows away into the nothingness that it always has been. He is the resurrector of the psyche, as his work is almost always carried out clandestinely and subconsciously. Pluto is the whisper that something is amiss, positive or negative is up to the seeker. 
He is psychological and universal in nature, so he handles what is best for the individual on a collective scale. Personality indentations do not derail him from his teachings. He spiritually bypasses anything that the ego can attempt to subject him to. He is the seer of the psyche and the superconscious, and he is the enforcer of the soul's advancement. He is considered detrimental to some because his energy is dramatic. He knows what he is doing, however, because in the beginning, before the soul has advanced enough to recognize spirituality, one will typically respond only to drama. Once the soul and the personality have been united on the material plane, the inklings of the Plutonian nudge shall be noticed immediately before a recreational drama can be imagined. Pluto, with his nature being masculine unsettled, is the area in the natal chart in which one may notice many extremes in their experiences. His essence, as we said, is psychological in nature, and so these extremes may be recognized as somewhat of an internal revolution by the seeker. Sometimes it may be so extreme that it produces a physical change in circumstances, but either which way, the catalyst will more often than not be a psychological one. Since Pluto is a general planet, it is imperative to know which house he is placed in and his major aspects to other celestial bodies and points on the natal chart. The house in which he is placed will allow the native to see how their subconscious mind reacts and responds to stimulus orchestrating change. This area may be witness to or participatory with psychological upheavals and revitalization of the psyche. He can be seen as scary to some who are still asleep within their slumber because his message is deep and most times hidden beneath the surface of the mind. To study the Plutonian path is to dive deep into one's own psyche, be it harmonious or that of discord. The house he is located in will denote what drives the individual to transformation on a soul level. We are not talking of a changing of the hair color here. His action is closely associated with what you would call spiritual awakening on the earthly plane. If you are in the driver's seat of your soul's vehicle, Pluto is the navigation device. He is the destroyer of things which no longer serve, and his moda operandi is one of subconscious innuendos. He is a catalyst for major change, yet never coerces one to do so. We may view P Pluto as the perversion of the truth one thinks they know, shedding light onto the unseen depths of consciousness which have been buried in one's psyche for perhaps eons. He simply plants a tiny seed of recognition which is highly contradictory to what the individual already believes and he waits to see what springs forth of it. He waters it yes and provides it sunlight when required, but it will indefinitely be the individual himself to pull the plant out of the ground and utilize its nutrients. To move instinctively through undercurrents of electricity is to move like Pluto. He is the ultimate suggestion that there can be something greater than what is imagined right now. Mars, Saturn, and Pluto may be misrepresented as malefic and or ill-doing because they defend, unlock, and restore the true essence of one's very being. They are not passive in their actions, and passivity and complacency in much of society today is considered to be a good thing, and they are, but only when justified. Justified also is the protection of the self, the remembrance of the soul, and the resurrection of the divine which lies dormant within us all. So initiated, 
unyielded and restorative masculine energy is quite indeed very beneficial towards the development of the individual and the recognition that he is a soul having a human experience. This is not ill-doing to us, it is will-doing, carrying out the will and certainty of the soul here in the physical experience. Here is where we will conclude this session of the Malefic Planets in Astrology. As always, we implore you to take what resonates, conduct your own independent studies, and to leave out that which does not jive. Thank you for your attention. Okay, so uh, that was basically the channel. Uh, I think it's a self-explanatory enough said, right, with the malefic planets. Um, um, you know, I know that this message was meant for uh, a few of you because, you know, that's why I uh, received the nudge to post it. And uh, I am Oculus the Alien next door. As always, peace, good vibes, and namaste. <laughs> blessed because you are.